Welcome, glad to have you back. Today we are going to have a look at Zero Division. What is Zero Division? Zero Division is a cyberpunk, roguelike deck building game which also features collectible card game mechanics and all single player. And it also has a campaign mode, it even features a drafting mode. Um, so where you start off with just a, like a certain base set and then play certain challenges while you well have your deck building experience. And I'm very much excited to see how those modes differ. But today we're going to have a look at the official demo, especially the campaign mode, to get a grasp of the game. Also, I actually played the tutorial for this one, which was totally fine and already made me excited to jump into the campaign. There's one thing I'm gonna get into a little bit later because there was one mechanic in the tutorial which I actually didn't quite understand. Also, let's have a quick look at the settings menu before we jump into the game for a demo. I mean, it's fine. We have a couple of sliders for the audio, which is always fine. Resolution, quality modes. I actually would like to see for this game to have like not an, uh, just an audio UI slider, but actually a slider to make the UI maybe a little big, uh, big, bit bigger. Oh, perfect English there, because I feel like doing the game. There's a lot of text that we need to read for the different cards and so, which are well defined. It's understandable, but maybe a little bit too small for some players, I could imagine that. It's also a little bit on the fence, on the edge for me personally, where I would like to, okay, you know, just having the UI, especially for the text, like 10% bigger would be a little bit easier on the eye to, to speak. But now, without further ado, let's hit new campaign and let's see in this first impression video what actually awaits us. So, we are supposed to assemble your crew, well, our crew, Mirage, so this, the these are the three I also played in the tutorial. Guardian, Mercenary, Captain. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Launch. We have Guardians, Assault, and Specialists. So, um, the way this collectible card game, deck building game works is essentially, um, of course, we have a hand and we have a hero that has special interests, um, special abilities, special cards, and it's also a minion on the field. So. Um, I'm gonna show you this in a second, but just to get you a heads up, we actually have three heroes on the field and each and every hero during our turn has its own hand or her own hand and also his or her um, and or her own action points. So we can use their abilities well, during our turn, we actually have three people to manage, so to speak. To keep it short, and I'm gonna show you this, how that's gonna work. So, Paladin, Renegade, and Mirage are the ones I played in the tutorial. We can see the Paladin is for a defensive playstyle. The Veteran Soldier has two attack, three action points, can have a hand of five cards, has one armor in 28, uh, 28 HP, and also has an ability, which is essentially that his block does never expire, so he's always going to be able to tank one damage. And also, I'm surprised not to see it here. Maybe we can influence that during the gameplay. I'm interested to see that. During the tutorial, he also had an active ability, which essentially forced an enemy to attack him, like a taunt ability. I think it's also called, uh, called taunt. Then we have uh, the Renegade, which is offensive. Um, this one is a rogue troubleshooter, three attack, three AP, a hand of five, zero armor, 24 HP, a little bit less, and has an active Rally Renegade ability, Diesel Hearth, which essentially gives him another opportunity to attack and her cards in the tutorial also featured to essentially trade off her armor for even more damage so you have an incentive to try to stack as much attack for a single round as possible to combine this with a diesel heart ability to essentially attack twice for i don't know eight damage or so and then times two which Seems fun. And we have the Mirage, which is a little bit of um, a summoner, so to speak. So, one attack, three AP, hand of five, 23 HP. And her ability is Hollow, Fabri uh, Hollow Fabricator, which, well, if we activate it, which also has a cooldown of two, deploy a Mirage clone, which has just very small stats. But first off, we can use that to, to attack or to block. If we attack, that's the holographic um, ability or the tech that we see there, essentially, if holographic units attack, they disappear afterwards. 
But she also has cards, which, for example, um, al allows her to sacrifice her holographic units, her Mirage clones, to activate certain abilities, which is also fun. So these are the th uh, three I played. Apparently, there's also Jin, which is also a defensive unit, also, of course, classified as a guardian. But he has an auto cannon. Each time Jin is attacked, deal damage to the attacker equal to his attack. Interesting. Or we could choose another assault unit, Rook. Each time Rook plays a strike card, she gains one AP. Oh, she can have a hand of six. You know what? Even though this is the base set, and I found this very interesting, let's switch it up just a little bit. Let's actually go with... I really liked Renegade to activate that ability. Very powerful, but this seems to be also... Yeah, this seems to be to go for more of a combo build. Can we switch this out? There we go. Just drag it up. Paladin, Rook, Mirage. So, we just to have a little bit of a change during this first impression, everyone has a hand of five. And we are going to completely have a different playthrough than everybody else by having one character with a hand of six. We are so unique here. And just a sec, what's my mission to show you guys a hopefully interesting video game almost every day? Oh man, that was actually a surprisingly fluid trans transition here on this channel, giving my past experience, right? I'm surprised and proud of myself here. So we have to select a new district. Interesting. Explored, available explored. So, well, it's a demo. We can't really have a look at these two, which is fine. Let's go to Blindside District. An urban enclave once known for its teeming populace and decrepit tenements. Blindside District is now desolate warren of rubble and blind allies. Alice, scavengers from the faction stalk its narrow gangways, looking for scraps and ingenious prey. Interesting. Also, to keep that in mind, um, there is a little bit of a story setup that was introduced in the tutorial, which is, sen is essentially, we are essentially just clones ourselves, which have been created by, well, a very powerful um, corporate entity. And those corporate entities, well, claim us because they created us and sent us out to apparently collect artifacts to do, I don't know what with those. That seems to be the story I gathered from having played the tutorial. And now let's have a look at this. Welcome to Zero Division. Welcome to the Zero Division demo. This demo starts in the second act of the game. Ooh, second act. Where your crew will venture through the perilous Blindside District. Your objective is to explore Blindside and uncover its secrets. Before your supply, shown in the top left corner, oh, I see that, 8 out of 8, is exhausted. Uh, in this demo, your crew comes armed with a pre-built starter deck, a cache of three data shards, and three randomly selected augmentations. Before you begin exploring, you can customize your crew by installing your augmentations in the crew panel. I see a crew panel there. Opening your shards in the vault panel. I see a vault. Tweak your decks in the armory panel. Okay, crew, vault, armory. Just as a small thing, um, I guess me as a player would appreciate it if these three suggestions which all it would also align with the ui here now it's like crew is here in the middle okay vault is to the right and then armory to the left but this is literally just a highly classified nitpick but, but i feel like i am worth mentioning regardless if you need any help at any time click the contextual help button near the top right corner Ooh, oh that's a lot currency are earned from combat and events gleam is used to acquire services and items at quorum brokers so you're doing the runs i guess the shop supply is used to explore the expeditions map one supply is consumed per move uh, one supply is consumed per move fair enough we gotta get very far before that runs out oh how am i supposed to pronounce this memo synth Sure. It's used to permanently add cards to your collection for future runs in the fail self panel. Oh, there we go. So this is the currency we need uh, in this roguelike mechanic to get better doing future runs. Or for future runs, fair enough. Armory, build and tweak your cruise decks in the armor bell. Augment, we learned that. Expedition, continue your run in the expeditions panel. Explore landmarks to earn data shards and other valuables. Vault, open your data shards in the vault panel. Data shards provide card set to your cruise decks. And spend Nemo Synth, oh man, in the failsafe panel, uh, panel to install cards which can be used in future runs. Failsafe, the expedition panel. This is the expedition panel where you direct your crew to explore the landmarks of the current district. Each time your crew moves to a new location, one supply, shown in the top left corner, is consumed. Once all your supply has been consumed, the expedition ends. Got it. There are five types of location. The boss, apparently the big one, elite enemies and normal enemies. 
It's just an enemy, interesting. These are combat encounters where your crew must use their decks and wits to overcome enemies or powerful bosses. Combat encounters typically reward Gleam, Mnemo Synth, Data Shards, and may reward Augments. If your crew is defeated in a combat encounter, the run ends. To so tackle these fights with care. Ooh, blue ones are events. In events, your choices determine the outcome of the encounter. Events encounter may reward stuff and augments. Crew room broker. I feel like this is might be I mean it's obvious like an exclamation mark, but they look very I don't know why is an exclamation mark also an enemy while well, these are very clearly enemies. I feel like this is a little bit wild, but again, just a nitpick. Chrome Broker. Chrome Brokers are enterprising salesmen from the Mega Corp Consortium, selling a selection of valuable services and products for a price. Spend your claim to restore your crew's HP, call in a supply drop, or acquire data shards and augments. If your crew's position is precarious, for example, due to low HP, you may choose to end the expedition early. Note, this ends the demo, since only one district is available. Okay, so this is everything available in the demo, fair enough. So we're starting here. Lamb Black Row, entrance. What's mine is mine. What's yours is mine, too. Nice, that is what I uh, want to say as well, sure. We have a legend here, that's nice to have for the map. Okay, Moonstone Arcade, it's combat, it's... It's seen things you people wouldn't believe. Or we could go here. Brass pavilions, combat. Men's evil manners live in brass. Or this one. Treventine Bullocks, combat. What lurks beneath these weathered terraces? Fair enough. Well, we want to have at least one boss, which is going to be at the end of this. It's awfully cold in here. Oh, God. End of the line. Fair enough. So, elite enemy two. I guess we want to try to see the elite enemy, which would be here, but this wouldn't allow me to really choose a shop. I would like to see a shop as well, and of course events. So before we're gonna choose a pathway, because we want to see as much as possible here, let's go to crew armory? Armory. Oh god, that's a lot. This counter shows whether the active crew member's deck is eligible. For a deck to be eligible, the deck must have a minimum number of cards. Our crew member's decks must be eligible to traverse the expedition map. Fair enough. We have a, car a deck for everyone. This panel shows the cards currently in your collection this run. Click on cards from your collection to add cards to your crew member's decks. For easier searching, use the search box and the filters at the top of the panel to filter. Okay. Click on your crew member's portray to edit that crew member's deck. Fair enough. You can add cards to the active crew member's deck by dragging and dropping cards from your collection or remove cards by clicking on them. Note that signature cards cannot be removed. The red one, so I guess safeguard would be a signature card because of this red symbol. Oh yeah, these are the red ones. Fair enough, that is very clear to understand. Okay, well, we don't have any cards right now, which is good because otherwise I would be a little bit overwhelmed. Oh, we have a loyal companion! We have dog! Nice. Deploy a loyal companion which has the intervene ability. Activate, um, zero cooldown, eliminate this unit. Target L against two block, no! We are supposed to sacrifice the dog? Oh man, this is terrible. Sorry guys, clearly this is the worst game ever. Wow, we ha oh man, or maybe we are the worst people ever. Sacrificing the dog? Oh, this is dark. Didn't expect this. Oh man, crew. All right. The crew stats panel displays helpful information on your crew members, including their current HP. For enough, the crew augments panel shows the augments currently installed on each crew member. Hover over any augment slot for more information. To install augments or change your slotted augments, switch to the augmentation view using this button. All right. And expedition vault. Let's have a look at this. Once you open a data shard, its content will decrypt into a selection of six cards. You may choose any two of the six cards to add to your collection. Okay, so data shards are essentially just card packs. Got it. Which can then be added to your decks in the armory panel. These are the data shards you have earned so far on this run. <laughs> cause I'm, well, act two, right? I blaze through this run cause I'm so good. To open a data shard, drag and drop them over to the center of the vault panel. Even Leiju Shard, the wisdom of the ages, distilled into bite-sized chunks. Oh god, well sure. Whoa, ooh, ooh, cards, I have no idea what's good. Do we have red cards or so? There's different symbols. Piercing. I mean, this has an orange one. Th this one's yellow. Yellow gear and white gear. So I guess common, kinder, uncommon, maybe a little bit rarer, I don't know. Snipe, deals seven piercing damage. Oh, ignores armor, that sounds good. I mean, sure. 
I have no idea. I'm just gonna show because seven sounds like a high number and I'm just gonna go by symbols. Gain five block. Put target gear from your repo on top of your deck. Reset your ability cooldown. Deal damage to the target unit equal to its attack. Interesting. Cost two though. Reset your ability cooldown. That would be good on the renegade. Oh, we don't have the renegade anymore. I chose the rook, right? Gain five block. I don't know. Let's go by this. Sure. I mean, what is this? A liturgic, oh god, liturgical manual shard. What secrets lurk within the dark, cold streets of Zazura? The code auditors know. Sure, open the pack. Polymorphic software. Copy target card in your hand. Interesting. Raptor wing. Deploy a warbird. Break. Uh, generate a warbird. Cool. Deploy a warbird. Breakdown three. Generate creates a new instance card in your hand. Oh, so we over. I mean, I like summon. Sure, I have no idea. We're just gonna collect these cards. I'm gonna do the first combat without any uh, editing on our decks, and then we're gonna have a look at that later. Because otherwise, it would be a little bit too much, I think. Hammered rounds. Install. Ammo. Do we know what install does? If I hover over this, it actually doesn't tell us. I guess this is already a little bit of a nitpick. Um, towards for the end of the video for my review for my oh god um, yeah when we hovered over the warbird it sh actually showed us the different mechanics here which is cool which I expect why doesn't it do that for the other cards I mean that's always helpful for example I don't fully understand how the install tag works in this game the mechanic mo 3 each time you attack inflict one break on your target and remove a stack of this effect to play this card, eliminate a non-operative ally. ally. Draw two cards. That would be good for the remarks, sure. Scrap for parts, sure. Enchiridion chart. Fresh, writhing data, dredged from the upper thick depths of the Zura's mesh. God, there's a lot of words here. Null field, grand protection. Oh, this time we actually don't have an orange card. Ah, flick burning too. For example, here it works. Maybe it's just, a, yeah, there, skimmage. Maybe it's just a little bit of a bug. Command, no, maybe it's just a few cards. Command, I have no idea what that does. Burning, explained. Bleeding and burning, explained. Skirmish, explained. Not command, though. Protection, also not ex explained. So I guess, well, it's a demo. Just half of it has been implemented yet. Flick to burning. At the start of round, deal damage to this unit. Equal to the stacks on this effect. Then remove a stack. Take down, command, target other ole skirmishes with the target enemy. I have no idea. Convert all bleeding stacks into burning stacks on target unit. Repair. Remove a debuff from target unit. Stay behind me! Command. Set targets, uh, target other allies' armor equal to your armor to this round. Gain protection. I have no idea. This. Whatever. Oh, two cards. Uh, debuff. Sure. All right. At least we had a look at Volt. Let's have a look at fail safe. This is only relevant once we have this blue thing. But yeah, let's have a look anyway. For easier searching. Okay, filtering. To imprint a card, drag and drop the card to the area below in imprint view and click the imprint button. A maximum of three copies of each card can be imprinted. Imprinting costs um, yeah, money based on card rarity. Got it. Use this button to switch between viewing your collection for this run and imprinting cards and viewing your permanent imprinted collection. Okay, this is how we permanently buff cards for future runs. Very interesting. Expedition. If I click this, we are back on the map. Okay. Now let's do some augmentations. I guess, we, yep, the game told us we are starting with three random ones. At the start of round, the student gains one block. Cool. Each time this unit attacks and flicks burning on its target. Ooh. Oh, this is super good on Rook, which wants to attack a lot with its abilities, right? So definitely there. I mean, Paladin, make the tanker more tankier, so to speak. And Ophidian Gaze. Each damage, damaging shortcut this unit's place he gets two additional damage. Do we have anyone who has shot cards? I have no idea. I guess for this we would be required to have a look at their decks, right? Oh, which is here on the right side. Block. He has a lot of taunting, which is fine. Concuses shot. That is one shot ability. Oh, he also has a loyal companion. Pelon. Or maybe that's the one. Backflip. Yeah, doesn't seem to be shot. Blading, she, so she has all the melee attacks, so to speak. 
Fired will a fire wolf. Oh, look at the fire wolf. Oh, awesome. I really like the card art, by the way. Very stylistic, very beautiful. To be fair, it's maybe a little bit hard, or maybe it's just depending on the experience once you play a bit more uh, to differentiate them. They are beautiful, but not like that colorful, maybe to really brand yourself and your brain. But I'm kind of looking at how it's displayed here on the right side. I'm kind of comparing this to Hearthstone right now, but maybe that's unfair. But yeah, it's just the first one. Copycat. Okay, we have. Oh, there's one. Shattering Shot. Deal three damage and inflict two armor. So she has three shot cards. He has Concusers. So both of them have three shot cards. If I want to go back to crew, say augmentations. So it doesn't make sense to give this to Rook. Each damaging shot card this unit plays deals two additional damage. I mean, he's there to block. She has her mirage things. But... No, yeah, let's actually have a look. What is Concuser? Deal two damage and inflict two attack on this target. Minus two attack on the target this round. Cool. And the Shattering Shot deal three damage and inflict le Ooh, less armor. That's pretty good, actually. Well, we don't know which is good. Two additional damage. Eh, sure. I don't know. Let's go full on Paladin Mirage. Maybe needs her uh, points not to attack, but to do something with her Mirage things. So, I finally wasted enough time. Let's go, Expedition. Let's actually choose where we want to go. There's an event. Cool. There we have another combat. Elite enemy, combat, and boss. But I would like to see at least one shop. Broker there. That's kind of harsh, actually. There's here, but that means we have the choice to either see a shop or to see an elite enemy. I can't show you guys both, which is a little bit sad. But I guess in this case, let's go with here, maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So no elite enemy, but one pawn shop. So let's take this way. Travertine blocks. Sure, let's have a combat account and let's see what truly happens now. Loading. Blind Sign District. Travertine blocks. Mirage. Get ready to fight, Mirages. Also, of course, this is a little bit more than in... Oh, size. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I love that. She, she's talking with him. Don't get sad with me. I'll break your transistors. So, I'm sorry, ma'am. God, I'm unsufferable. <laughs> she hates her own mirages. Everyone is going to attack them. So, yeah, now we're finally here in combat. The actual gameplay, I like that there's actually something happening here on the field as well. So, first things first. I wish, because this was also interesting with some dialogue and actually so far short, but decently entertainingly written dialogue in the game. Please get voice actors. I want this to be voice actors, because otherwise uh, otherwise this game feels a little bit empty so far, and this would really, really, really enhance the game and the feel of it, and especially with this kind of witty and cool dialogue. So I really, really, really hope and really want to see for the full game to have voice acting for these characters. That would be amazing. So, yeah, here we are in the combat. We are going to fight a Havoc Reaver, a Havoc Alpha, a Havoc Alpha, and another Havoc Reaver. These four guys... We have, these are three heroes on the field, so if you have a rough comparison to Hearthstone, which is hopefully somewhat fair for you guys, because it's that popular, or used to be at least. So we have three minions on the field, which are three heroes, so to speak. And every hero has its own card hand, as I kind of tried to hint at early on. So we can see here, and also their own mana to spend, so to speak, or energy. So Paladin right now has these five cards, these three attacks, and he as a minion, so to speak, can also attack one of these guys. Same with Rook. I choose here with right click. She has six cards, as we learned when we selected her. Three energy to play these cards. And Mirage also three energy, these five cards, and we can do all of these things. We have quite a lot of vari uh, variability, so to speak. We don't need to play them order. I could now start with Mirage. I could start with Rook. And they can also attack individually. For example, if I drag, she's going to attack for three. We can see here, attack, armor, and HP. 
They all have their base attack. Paladin has two, Rook three, Mirage one, and HP. If that drops to zero, we are in trouble. And at least Paladin has his permanent one armor. And the same applies to the enemies, so to speak. He has three attack, 22 hit points, four attack, one armor piece. So if we attack for three damage, only two would actually affect his HP. And for 122, same with this. And they apparently have also some abilities. Let's have a look at those. So arrogance ability. At the start of round, this unit gains arrogant X, where X is the stacks on this effect. Interesting, arrogant. This unit gains plus one attack per stack of this effect. Remove a stack of this effect when this unit takes unblockable damage. Interesting. So you want to apply damage, otherwise these guys will become more and more dangerous, more and more arrogant, so to speak. Arrogant buff, yeah. This guy has Vengeant, okay? Whenever an enemy unit is eliminated, enemy unit, this unit gains plus one attack and plus one armor per stack of this effect. So the question is, because every game handles this differently, from which perspective is Vengeant written? Whenever an enemy unit is eliminated, this unit gains plus one attack and plus one armor per stack of this effect. Does this apply from their side of perspective or from mine? So if one of my units, enemy from his perspective, gets destroyed, he gets stronger. Or if one of his allies, but enemies from my perspective, gets destroyed, does he get the buff? I actually have no idea. I guess once you have experienced this in the game, it's clear, but right now I have no idea. Okay, so also very arrogant. And everyone, if you hover over, the game tells us which of these are going to attack which uh, one at the end of our turn and everyone is going to attack Mirage, which is a little bit of a problem. So we have her active ability, Holo Fabricator. We can always activate their abilities and also attack. It's not a um, choice, so to speak. And I'm actually going to do this. So this is essentially for free. Activate this and we have to deal with these abilities. Each time Rook plays a strike card, she gains one AP. So we really want to use the strike cards. He has the taunt ability. Okay, so he still has this, but um, the taunt ability wasn't really shown to us when we selected Paladin in the uh, screen at the beginning. Subdermal armor, yeah, he has at least one armor. So if anyone gets attacked, we kind of would like to have that being forced on Paladin, but we can also only use taunt ability well, on one enemy from his side. So holographic after this unit's attacks eliminated. Or we want this to be attacked. Let's see. What would be a good setup? Before we attack, we usually want to uh, buff our units. So I guess let's start maybe with Mirage. Right click. We have our deck, our repo. Okay, she has three energy. We can see in the top left corner, Wire Wolf costs two, scrap for part zero. To play this card, eliminate a non-operator ally. So I could essentially use this for zero, eliminate, uh, eliminate my Mirage and draw two cards. I wonder if I want to. Command, target other ally against plus two attack the surrounds. Deploy two Mirage clones. Ooh. That sounds pretty good. I mean, this only costs two. Wire Wolf, deploy a Wire Wolf also has breakdown. Uh, at the start of round, remove a stack. When there are no stacks left on this effect, eliminate this unit, fair enough. So this is gonna be on the field for three rounds, but has five HP and two attack, which is also pretty nice. Target other la- So we are probably going to attack a lot with Rook. So let's use fire at will. Activate this on select Rook. Make her stronger. So she has two left. Ah, I would like to have a wire wolf. But on the other hand, it uh, would be everything we could do. And also just having two more things. Let's actually activate mirror image. Having even more of these things, pretty cool. I love the art on these, especially so colorful. Now let's actually sacrifice one to draw two cards. Maybe we gain one, to, um, well, which costs one. So sacrifice this one. Gonna draw two cards now. This one is gone. We still have one energy. Oh, again, mirror image or fire at will again. So we can't play wire wolf because we don't have the energy on her. Which would also be good. No, let's go fire at will and make Rook even more stronger for this turn. So Mirage is done. She's still going to be attacked by everyone, but she managed to summon stuff. Still have three cards in the hand and Rook is very strong.
So before we use Rook, let's see what Paladin is about. Okay, he could deploy a loyal companion, deploy a loyal companion, intervene. We could use this dog to protect Mirage. Oh man, this... No, why does the loyal companion work with, like that? It's so... Oh, tackle, uh, target ally against three block. I mean, there's a lot of damage incoming, so we could block one of those attacks, so to speak. He also has safeguard gain um, plus three block. Target other ally also gains plus three block. This could, this could be good if we combine this with his block ability. Gefer three block, him two. Galvanize, rally target... Other ally. What does that mean? Rally. Rally. This unit is reactivated and may attack again this round. Rally effects can only be played on exhausted units. Interesting. So we want to keep this up for Rook, I guess. So before I actually play any of these cards, let's have a look at Rook. So she has seven base attack right now, which is hopefully pretty good. Flashing Edge. So her ability is again, each time Rook plays a strike card, she gains one AP. This is a strike card, um, I would assume, because of the symbol, right? These two swords. There we go. And maybe you guys know already um, what I meant early on. There's so much you need to read, and it's very clearly pre present uh, presented, which I... Well, thumbs up to the game for that. But I personally would like if the UI would just be a little bit bigger. Because this is surprisingly small. I don't know how this is going to be on a fake 4K monitor. So. And just to have this as an accessibility option. I feel like a lot of other people would appreciate this. For me, it's fine. But, like, yeah, again, it's a little bit on the fence. So let's see. Soul Cutters. Generate two knife throw. Creates a new instance card in your hand. Cost two. Interesting. Cost zero, though. Instance. Deal one damage and inflict one bleeding. I would assume that these knives are going to be strike cards. Backflip, deal one damage, gain plus two block and draw a card. Ooh, for zero, very good card. Flushing edge, lash out, also strike card, deal one damage and inflict one bleeding. Bleeding at the start of round, deal one piercing damage to this unit, then remove a stack. Discard a card, draw three, reconsider. Hmm. Let's go with soul cutters, that seems decent. Yep, they are strike cards, nice, instant. When this card is played or discarded, remove it from game, fair enough, bleeding. She also has 7 attack, and maybe with Paladin we can attack twice. So, what do we want to go with? These guys are dangerous, but these... Well, everyone is dangerous. <laughs> Let's start with the right one, because I have no idea. We have to start somewhere, and I really want to find out how Vengeant really works. Oh, wait, it should be from my perspective. Because technically, whenever an enemy unit is eliminated, this unit gets plus one attack and plus one armor. It doesn't have a buff on attack right now, does it? Yeah. Mod, zero mod, zero effects. Because technically, at least from my perspective, we previously eliminated at least one of the mirages with her effect. Of the holographs. So if I destroy this guy, these two will be more dangerous. Oh man. Well, these guys really complement each other in a good way. Okay, let's see. Knife throw. Gonna activate this card. I'm gonna do something. I have to learn as well. This is just my first real combat. So she gain, regained the AP, which is nice. Knife throw, especially co considering that this costs zero. And we gain one extra mana. Use it on this guy as well. Deal damage. He's also bleeding. Yeah, at the start of round, deal one uh, piercing damage. He is down to... 22 HP. And yeah, this is the thing I mentioned earlier from the tutorial. There's also an armor break mechanic in the game. If we break someone's armor with this, first off, their current armor for one turn is going to be reset to zero, if I understood that correctly. And also, they essentially skip a turn because they are essentially stunned for that. So we can disrupt the text and abilities and so with that effect as well. And that wasn't that v well explained in the tutorial for my um, taste. I was just doing stuff and it somehow worked. But now looking at this, it seems like if I attack five times, I think this is the armor break. Bar, so to speak. Armor. Armor break. Yeah, if I hover over this very thin line here, break meter, region per round one, resets next round if broken, yeah. Now it's kind of clear to me, but this wasn't that explained, because here we go with the UI. Maybe a little bit too small. There's like this one pixel where I am able to select the armor break thing. 
Now I understand how it works, but that left me a little bit confused at the tutorial area. Okay, good to know. Now I understand. Deal one damage, gain two block, draw a card. Let's do this. One damage to this guy, gain the block. There we go. Block is essentially just temporary buff to our HP. Oh, another backflip. Yeah, sure. Let's break this guy's armor with all these extra. Repositioning. She's just backflipping all over the place. I really like her. 5-6 card, 5 energy, or you can completely go haywire with her. Flick 1 bleeding and 1 armor, uh, draw a card. And minus 1 armor? Inflict bleeding 1 and 1 armor. Armor to her? Let's see. I'm gonna select this, attack this guy. No, she didn't gain the armor. We, I guess we would have destroyed his armor, but now... No, his armor break is still up. He still le lost the armor. Got it. Another backflip. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna attack now for 7 him. Because this is not gonna be blocked by the one armor. This is gonna deal some decent damage. And this hopefully should break his armor too. Let's see. Bong. Nice. Also burning. At the start of round, deal damage to this unit is equal to the stacks on this effect. So he's gonna take 4 damage now. From bleeding and burning. He's at 15, but he's not gonna do anything right now. So he's essentially stunned. Let's actually switch back to Paladin, Galvanize, Rally target other unit. So Rook could now attack once more. Get in there! Nice. I really need this to be voiced. Okay. He has two left. He can still do stuff. So we're essentially still in the first round of combat, guys. <laughs> Cinder Scorn. Each time this unit attacks, inflict burning on its target. The start of round did damage. Oh, we had that, right? But there's only one burning, I guess, because before it was always blocked by the armor or something. Let's try to block off more people. Maybe this guy backflip against this one. There we go. Blocked stim shot. Target ally gains three block. We have six energy. That's a lot. Deal two damage plus an additional two damage if the target is bleeding. This one's not bleeding yet. Lash out. Deal one damage and inflict one bleeding for zero. Use this against this guy. There we go. Cool. Now we can combo this with Flashing Edge, cost one, but essentially zero cost of our ability. There we go, nice, did three damage, another Flashing Edge against this guy. We're breaking his combo meter as well. Discard a card, draw three more. This costs two, she, have, she has seven energy. Well, we don't really need the stim shot. It would be interesting to see, um, I don't know how this mechanically works, if I would now play stim shot, and now then would play reconsider if i if, when i'm not able to discard a card a card if i would still be allowed to draw three cards if you can optimize your build with this but for now we don't really need the stim shot i think we i'm just gonna throw this away for now to draw three more and there we go oh man still five energy i really like playing rook this is awesome Dispatch. Deal 2 damage plus an additional 2 damage for each strike card played by Rook this round. Wow, this should be very strong. Can, but eh, we don't see how many strike cards we played. So it would be nice if we would get an indicator for this. Because I don't know. I'm not able to remember that many cards. Let's go with Flashing Edge against this guy. Doing some damage. He's down to 13 HP and his com armor is also broken. Now we can see these two guys are not going to attack. Nice. Fan slash. Uh, we have five energy left. Fan slash. Deal X damage where X is equal to the number of cards in your hand. I should have played that earlier. Okay. Deal two damage plus an additional two damage for each strike card played by Rook this round. I am going to... Use this to damage, sure, on this guy. Sure, why not? We have it. Oh, did that deal two damage? Yeah, I think he was at 15 early on. Maybe just showing me as a player the actual damage, because you're throwing so many numbers and you have to reconsider so many things. Maybe having just very brightly sharp you dealt two damage would be nice. But again, just a nitpick. So far, the UI is pretty good, and I feel like it should, could just be optimized a little bit for old people like me, so to speak. Okay, let's see Dispatch. I have no idea. Deal two damage, okay. Plus an additional two damage for each strike card played by Rook this round. We have played quite a few. Unfortunately, I don't know how much damage this is gonna do. Would be nice if this would be shown. But sure, let's just throw it on this guy and see what happens. 
Oh yes, that did a lot of damage. Awesome. Yeah, and these guys are now buffed, unfortunately. But their armor is broken, so they're not going to attack. So there's only one this this one guy left to do something. While well, we still have this and one guy up in these mirages. So she's out of mana. Rook still has three energy, but unfortunately is out of cards. And now Paladin can still do stuff. So safeguard. I mean, gain three block. Target other ally also gains three blocks. He's only going to attack for three. I could use my taunt ability, but we can also just play safeguard on her. I've got you covered! And she should block the three damage with her three um, block, right? <laughs> block with a block. That should be fine. So we essentially have dealt with this incoming damage. He still has one energy. Might as well summon a loyal companion then. Where's the intervene ability? Activate zero. Yeah. Does he have breakdown? No. So we can use him whenever we want. Now he's on the field. Can't attack. He can. Oh, wait. She can still attack for seven. I forgot. Awesome. He can also attack. Well, might as well attack for seven this guy then. Bam. Oh, down to seven. He's still going to receive five damage. Yeah, sure. You attack two. For two, now they're... Oh, Mirage can also attack for one. Yeah, sure. Let's do this. Everyone attack here. Oh, he still has one armor. I forgot. He gained this because we defeated the other one. That was a little bit of a mistake. Because I thought, okay, one more damage and he's going to die from that burning and bleeding. A little bit of a miscalculation. We can't really get past this armor, unfortunately. So the question is, do I want to keep those mirages? I'm not required to play them, but I could, you know, just deal here some damage. Sure. This is not going to be bluffed. And the dog, we're going to leave this out. We could also attack for zero. Let's see what happens. What happens if I attack for zero? Okay, nothing. <laughs> would be interesting to see if this would still break some armor, but sure. Doggy is there. Doggy barked at this Havoc Reaver. And this has literally just been the first turn. I like how if we have these characters select, um, selected, we can see their augmentations here. Okay, this is everything we can do. We attacked with everyone. We played all the cards or, yeah, all the cards that we can or we used up all the energy we can do. Now let's end this round. Yep, blocked, awesome, right? She's a, yeah. Take the bleeding damage and so on. Did he, did he regain HP? Why is he only at 5? Maybe that was blocked as well, but there's piercing. Yeah, it looks like I still haven't fully understood this. Hmm. Well, I guess I have to learn this. Surprise. I expect that these guys would be, well, closer to death, frankly, but sure. Let's see. So you're going to attack Rook, you're going to attack Mirage, you're a paladin. We still want to get rid of these guys early on, because there's so much armor, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think our cactus are only always going to draw one card. Oh, wow, that is bad, then. Wow, so many energy. Will we spend all... How do I... Can I redraw a card somehow? That is bad. I thought they would draw up to their hand, but apparently that's not how it works. Well, there was a strong first round then. Oh, no. She has only the stim shot. This is bad. Well, we have our energy back. Uh, to play this card, eliminate a Mirage clone. Target enemy units gain minus two on our game. Let's use Mirage image then. Summon two. Wirewolf would be nice. But we only have two energy. To play this card, yeah, I want to have one enemy unit gains minus two armor. So I'm going to sacrifice this one to give yeah we have to get rid of at least this guy or this one what is better uh, let's see if we can get this l somewhat tougher guy might be a mistake I don't know so mine's to armor success is about making sacrifices this wasn't in our agreement <laughs> mirage clone fair enough okay she can't play this sorry I don't have enough AP yeah that is kind of sad. So he is down to zero. She, Rook, only has target ally gains three block. And you have another loyal companion, safeguard, three energy. So you can still play all cards. Loyal companion, there we go. 
So I guess um, you have to keep in mind to not always play all your cards. Because as you're only drawing one, you really want to use them at the optimal time. Safe card, so we can't really buff any of our people. Oh man, these Wirewolf are so cool. Okay, let's see if we can beat this guy down. Not quite. Might have been a mistake. Um, can we break down his armor? That's kind of the question, right? Attack, there we go. Yeah, attack once more. This guy's armor is broken. At least he's not going to do anything. So, this guy's going to attack and this guy's going to attack our guy here. This should be fine. Rook has target ally against plus three block. Let's play this on Paladin. He has still one armor, which is going to reduce damage. Gain plus three block. Target other also gains plus three block. What if we just, you know, use taunt on this guy too? So all of these two are going to attack Paladin. Five damage. Oh man. Let's use a stim shot on you. So eight damage is gonna come in. He has 11 block and the armor should also block one damage each. So it's essentially just three, two plus four, six damage coming in. We totally have the block. I only did a little bit of an overkill and we could still sacrifice our doggies to, you know, intervene. Oh, this is so bad. Well, I guess this is the best I can do. I'm going to end my run. Bam. Yes, everything is blocked. Cool. What I noticed now, I thought armor would be um, taken over from turn to turn, but it also seems like block is something that doesn't disappear per round, which is actually different but interesting in comparison to other games. I automatically suspected block would disappear, but no, it stays. It's essentially just temporary HP. Very good to know. They have so much armor. Oh man, ready target other ally. That's good. Ready is good. Mirage overrun. Each ally gains plus one attack this round. Oh, this is awesome. Well, she doesn't really have anything else. So use her ability. Having another clone. Summon a Wirewolf. And activate overrun to get everyone plus one attack. That has to be good. How about Rook Fragrenade? Huh? Just straight up deal three damage. Nice. Okay, he has rally target other units. She has the highest attack right now. We really want to make this count. How about, but the frag grenade is probably going to be blocked. We want to get rid of this guy. What if I attack for, um, with the, oh, the doggies have attacked too. Okay, you attack, break his armor. There we go. Armor is broken down to zero. Awesome. He's going to take at the start of round deal one piercing damage to this unit, then remove a sec. He's going to take one damage. So the wire wolf is going to attack. There we go, down to one HP. So this guy should be destroyed at the start of the round, of his round, which is awesome. Now we have to take care of these people somehow. Okay, let's try to break this guy's armor down. Safeguard. These force can still attack. What's the best option for that? Tier three damage. Frag grenade, deal one damage, one get should get through, and one armor break. Okay. This is fine. I kind of have to attack anyway, so you attack, will be blocked, you attack, damage will be blocked, you attack, break the armor, and one damage gets through. And she can attack. This is still piercing damage, because, yeah, he this guy, when we destroy this Havoc Alpha, the, uh, this guy is going to attack, uh, gain one armor, one attack. Doesn't matter for the bleeding, if I understand this right now. So, um, let's try this one. Perfect. We'll still be... Yeah. We'll still be destroyed by the bleeding. Unfortunately, this guy is going to attack her. But, first off, we have Rally. Rally. Can also intervene. Yeah, okay, you are going to intervene. Doggy, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That should work now, right? Block two. Oh, Yen. Oh, wait, this. It's not going to atta take the attack. It's only giving two block. Eh, that's not that cool, actually. Eh, sure. So she has four block, which is enough for this one attack. And we are going to end our run for now. Yeah, block this. 
Where's the bleeding? There we go. Perfect. Round four. Okay. Now we just have to bring this guy down with... Ooh, Galvanize is so good. Lash out. Deal one damage. Inflict one bleeding. Shadow play. Deploy Mirage Clone with Taunt. Wirewolf. I guess we're just gonna play everything right now. Okay, this is fine. Any active abilities to be used? Taunt? No. Breakdown. Lash out. Deal one damage. Inflict one bleeding. Sounds nice. There we go. Well, she has more energy. She really needs card draw then. And we're just going to attack with everyone. Well, he doesn't have armor, so that's great. Just bash him. And armor break as well. There we go. Would be nice if we could change... D uh, if I just gonna, you know, drag and drop everyone. Bam, bam, bam. If that would be a bit more fluent. Because it seems like it can do one and the animation is short. But it would be nice to chain these attacks for a little bit more of a fluid gameplay. Again, just a very, very ni minor nitpick, uh, which, which I feel would feel a little bit nicer. But yeah, nothing nothing bad, so to speak. Just a thing. Okay, Galvanize. Can we use this to win this round? No. But we can still... Yeah, technically, because you're going to deal three damage. And he's burning and bleeding, and this should win us the game now. Right? Perfect, we did it! Perfect! Click to continue it. Because no one really took damage rewards. Okay, 363 money gleam, one Nemo synth, a shard, another shard, and well, three different shards. Card pack, so to speak. Click to continue. There we go. And this was just the first combat. I'm su surprisingly long, but frankly also surprisingly fun. Oh man. This is gonna be a long round. All right. I'm gonna cut through this a little bit, but before we do anything else, let's actually see what an event is in this game. Apartment 401. Apartment has not been found. As you make your way through the cramped corridors of a semi-decrypt tenement block, you hear an insistent voice coming from behind the door to apartment 401. Hey, you! Yes, you! I have a proposition for you, but don't open the door. I'm listening. I've been hiding out here for months. But I'm out of victuals, and living on nothing but red kebabs making, makes a guy a little crazy. Problem is, I can't go out there. It's full of maniacs out there, uh, present company excluded, of course. So, here's my deal. I pull you a handsome word of gleam for some victuals. What do you say? What will you do? We gain 800 gleam for one less supply. I mean, sure, I guess. I have no lost one supply, gained 800 money. Ha! I'm finally gonna eat. That's grand of you, sir. Very kind indeed. Now, please leave your victuals in this tray here provided, and I'll weigh um, your fee. You take care to pack your least edible foodstuff into the tray and make off with your bell battered riches. Interesting. Nice event, sure. All right. We still have the vault with the yeast. We have the fail safe where we can upgrade a card. Let's actually do this. So this is a permanent upgrade, right? Let's see. Overrun was a pretty good ability. Snipe. We actually don't have snipe equipped. We actually want to give this to Paladin, maybe, because this is also a shot. Seven piercing damage sounds like a very good card indeed. Scattering shot, which is a card that I'm definitely going to use. It's only like this... Are these all the cards? Okay, I can't upgrade the signature cards from the units in themselves, it seems. Synth Jack. Deploy Synth Jack 105. Fire at will. Gains plus to attack this round. I think I'm gonna use this if possible, right? Flashing Edge. Deal 2 damage plus an additional 2 damage if the target is bleeding, which was also pretty nice, actually. Lash out. Deal 1 damage. Inflict 1. Yeah, sure. Let's just see what happens. Cost 7 to imprint. Never mind. Insufficient. Okay, we really need a lot of those then. Uh, okay. Got it. But good to know. All right, guys. Um, I think I'm going to see you after this cut. Finally, we managed to get to the broker, Chorus Syndicate. Trust me, you won't find a better deal this side of the crow room. So we have 2,041 money. What do we want to play with? I think I need one more supply. 
Let's buy this for 500 because I'm not sure if I have enough to reach the boss. Right now, an augment costs a thousand Ragefinder. As long as this unit is below 50% HP, it gains plus two attack. Ooh, we could buy a shard, fully restore HP. I did take a little bit of damage during the last rounds. Yeah, that's... Oh, I bought another supplies because I misclicked. Great. I am not able to fully restore my HP right now. That kind of sucks. Well, that's on me. Literally misclicked and bought another supply. What what more? So let's go to the crew. Let's see augmentations. And we have this now. No. Oh, did I find this? Each time this unit attacks, I inflict bleeding two on the... Yeah, I apparently found this as well. And oh, wait, no, now we have all four. What about the one I just bought? Did I buy another one? I bought an augmentation. It has to be this one. It looks like it showed me the wrong one. Because the one at the shop was like, if we're below X percent HP, we have plus two tag, right? I think there was a mismatch. Or I misunderstood something. I'm a little bit confused right now. Regardless, let's have a look at one more event right now. Enforcer Station. The brutalist silhouette of the Enforcer Station looms over you. Surrounded by a trail of bloodied corpses. It appears that a rioter gang made an ill-fated attempt to storm the station's automated defenses. Perhaps you might be more fortunate. Plunder the enforcer station? Leave the station, but loot the corpses instead. Ooh, that sounds very... I'm gonna, you know, just loot the corpses. Looks like we're gonna be in trouble in there. Ah, just some money. The charred bodies of the rioters provide slim pickings. But among the chrome-plated trinkets and fused augment transistors, you are able to scrounge up a handful of gleam. Complete. Okay. Well, I mean, why can't I loot the corpses and then try to go to the station? Well, looks like a boss is coming up. It's awfully cold in here. Awfully. Awfully. Oh man, what do we get? <laughs> That's a writing. It's awfully cold in here. Fair enough. The Abator. Well, let's go. The Abator. Skirting the torn remains of a security fence, you enter a refrigerated warehouse bearing the logo of Nisa Genomics, an Acrotech Megacorp. Inside, you spy rows of cold storage boxes, each containing hundreds of hearts, lungs, intestines, and other human organs. A trail of shattered bones lies scattered at the floor, leading deeper into the facility. Prepare for combat. All right, let's see a boss enemy. Let's see how this is gonna go. Probably horribly. Blindside, the aperture. This place gives me the chills, and it isn't just the refrigerated air. Looks like a corp research facility, hastily mothballed by the looks of it. Hmm. Wonder why they abandoned all these dogs. Is this sucks? It's not not like the corpse to just pack up and leave. Heads up, folks. With company. Ah, uh, what is that thing? It's a walking sack of organs. Yeah. Ah, oh, those are some walking sets. Oh, God, organicists. All right. At the start of. Oh, it's getting dark. All right. So they are all attacking someone else. That kind of sucks. They have two attack, fourteen HP. Is that it? There's probably more. Regeneration at start of round. Fully restore the this unit's HP. What? Oh, that is not good at all. Okay, so you use your ability. Yeah, she took some damage. Well, just one HP less. She two, well, two. Block actually gets attributed to this. Interesting. All right, how are we going to do this? 14 HP, we zero. Okay, we can work with this. I think we can do work with this. Come on, target other allies gains plus two tech. Let's actually summon a Wirewolf. And still... I mean, it's the combat round, right? So let's shadow play, deploy Mirage Cloud with a taunt. Sure. Oh, it costs two. Never mind. Mirage image then. Okay, let's have more. There's more of me than meets the eye. <laughs> I love Mirage is like with the sentences and the with the dialogues. She's my favorite. It's been to shot to play this card. Okay, this is fine. Okay, she can attack. I guess we. Do not want to take the ones on the outskirts because if they attack the uh, they attack our friend with the armor. All right, let's see what we can do. Do you have any equal cool buffs? Block, block, galvanize. All right, safeguard, and deal three times one damage. That should work with this, right? Each damaging shot card this unit plays deals two additional damage. I hope this is gonna be a three times three then. 
Gavinas is pretty good. Oh, we have to make a decision. Okay, before this... Oh, this also should uh, distract three times of the armor break thing, right? Because these are three different attacks. I hope so. Muscle memory. Lash out. Deal one damage. Inflict one bleed. Okay, we really rely on Rook's abilities here. Okay, let's leash out on this one. We gotta start somewhere, right? There we go. Deal damage. Bleed. Okay, they regenerate everything. Restore this unit's HP. That is not nice. Inflict bleeding two, draw a card for one. Sure, it's essentially free due to her wild reflexes ability. Deal two damage plus an additional two damage for each strike card played by Rook this round. Good to know. Good to know. She has four energy right now. Coup de Grace. Deal two times X damage where X is equal to the number of strikes in your repo. Shovel your repo into your deck. We don't have that much right now. To play this card, eliminate a non operator ally. Draw two cards. You know what? I'm going to do this. Let's... Sacrifice one to get two more cards. Ooh, perfect. Soul cutters, yes. Use this. Knife throw. Get the damage in. And essentially the money as well. Do one damage, inflict and bleeding. Yep. There we go. Five bleeding. I wonder what triggers first. Bleeding or regeneration? Uh, I probably don't want to find out. Not sure how good bleeding is in this case. She has four energy. How about retrieve target strike card from your repo? Let's use the shift right here. Did the damage. Oh, less armor. Should have done this sooner. Okay, he is down 11. Let's actually reconsider discarded draw card draw 3 on muscle memory. Yeah. 2 1. We have 4 energy total. There we go. Draw more cards. There we go. Oh, I love Rook. She's amazing. Plus, in addition to damage if the target is bleeding. Okay, this should be. Very good against this one. Flashing edge. Ah, one HP. That's kind of the thing right now. I'm not sure what triggers first. If bleeding triggers first, this one would be over. If not, well, he would regenerate to 14 and then take 6 damage, which would be fine as well. But we really want to get rid of them as uh, fast as possible. You're actually going to attack like this. There we go. One down. Okay, they, these two are attacking Paladin. You could also taunt this guy. So let's just focus to try to get the one in the middle. Deal damage. There we go. Back flipping. Oh, I love Rook. She is so amazing. Let's cut a card. Draw three more. Inflict beat. There we go. All the strikes. There we go. Oh, soul cutters. Yes. Essentially free thing. Use it all here. Minus armor is also freaking amazing, actually. There we go. Okay, we have four energy. We ha should have a lot in the repo uh, thing, but also for each strike card play uh, played this round, that is also amazing. Discard a card. Okay, I'm actually going to use this on the Coupe de Grace to just have three more cards. <laughs> this is so awesome. Flick Bleeding 2, draw a card, also a strike card. Essentially for free. Yeah, let's do this here. Good job, Bleeding 5. Another shift is also free, essentially. Use this here. Oh, Soul Cutters is also essentially free. Yeah, can I use this? Knife throw. Use it here. This can't be it. After we defeated this, guys, there's something even more evil going to appear, I'm sure of it. Okay, this down is deal X damage, where X is equal to the number of cards. Fan slash, not that great right now. I want to use this badge. Deal 2 damage plus in addition 2 damage for each strike card played by Rook this round. This should dispatch one of these guys immediately. Let's go. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> oh, that was like 20 damage. Amazing. She still has one energy. Um, this wolf is actually going to attack this one. I really want to... Oh, no, no. It's fine. Whatever. Okay. Can we get rid of this guy? I don't think so. Deal damage. Gain block. Rally. Barrier. Can we... I mean, if she attacks, she still applies burn, right? No, bleeding too. Okay, and burn. Oh, sh so amazing. What is her ability again? If uh, Each time this unit attacks, inflict burning on the target and bleeding. So I guess it would be fine if you just use the stim shot on you. He keeps his block thanks to his ability. That's awesome. Let's not attack. Let's rally her to just apply more status effects. There has to be more. This is too easy. And now he's going to tank the damage. Let's just end the round. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay, those stacks apply after the regeneration. Good to know. 
I mean, this is fine, right? 11. What if you just attack? Do we even need to play cards? So many stacks. There we go. He's broken as well. Three. Okay. Can we deal three damage? Probably. Fire at will. Shadow play. Fan slash. Would be three damage, right? No. Yeah, does it include the card itself? I actually don't know. Yeah, time to fi figure out, right? Let's go. Fan slash. Does it deal two or three? Three. Inclu does include itself. Nice. Now there. Oh, there's actually. Awesome, there's actually enemy. Oh, 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 never mind. I couldn't even read the text. Okay. There was an introduction. Great, more of them. Let's clean this place up. What the? Yeah, we need voice acting, especially if you skip these texts. Heads up, crew. Send that thing back to hell. Bestial hold. The abomination gains plus attack permanently. Whoa, 40 HP. This is awesome. Yeah, make use of the board. It's so empty otherwise. But there's freaking all right. Six attacks. Not good. But 40, no armor. It's not easy to break. Well, why did this have to be used oh, in the middle of the round? This is cool. I like this. Okay, it's attacking our guy here. This is actually good. So backflip. Let's see how much we can actually do. Another dispatch. By Rook this round, slash, I mean, sure, with the attacks. I might as well use the dispatch, right? Okay, down to 30. Surprisingly good. Could we go? Yeah, sure, let's go. She's out of card, which is not good. Well, we had an amazing first round with her. So, can you use your holographic? Oh, yes, cool. What do you have? Mirror image. Attack the other ally against plus two attack. Uh, and I made them, oh, I should have done this sooner. Sacrifice one to go this guy minus two armor. Seems permanent as well. Okay, fired well. She has two, sure. Two more. Summon more. I think now the board would also be full. Two, four, six, eight. Fired will, sure. Why not on Rook? Okay. We have her. She played all her cards. Rook played all her cards. What can you do? Do you three? Ah, oh, no, I should. No, no, it's just the card. Do you three damage and inflict minus two armor? But burst fire should deal three times three damage because this is armor minus two. And also, technically, he has this, right? Each damaging shot card. This unit plays deals two additional damage. I wonder how this works with burst fire. Let's see. Does he deal three times three or maybe even three times five damage? Let's find out. Oh. Okay, he was at 22, so it was 14 damage. So how much did we deal? 13? I'm confused how that works, but we dealt a lot of damage. Has to be good for something. Oh, we, well, I, oh man. Maybe I should have done a little bit for blocking, but I mean, at least for the demo, this is gonna be our last fight, so. Take for four, and look, just look at this, it's fine. Is that really it? Let's see what happens. <laughs> Did we kill it? Is it over? Maybe no. Oh, oh. oh no, it's, it's growing. Okay, never mind. Oh man, I'm out of stuff, man. Taking pot shot at it, at it is futile. We need to deliver a mortal blow before it can regenerate. This is not good. Press space to clip. Okay, um, six attack. It's still going to attack me. This unit inherits attack buffs from the previous phase. Luckily, there weren't too many. At start of round, fully restored this unit's HP. 35. Problem is, Rook is essentially out of attack. Oh, everyone. G oh, this is a new round, though. Okay, everyone drew cards. Interesting. So he's going to attack. You know what? I'm going to play this safe now. Inflict minus two armor. You are going to attack me for six. I am actually two, four, six, seven. I'm going to summon one copycat to make these guys stronger. Shadow play. Okay, this gives us things with torn for the next round. So um, I want you to just gain the block right now on yourself. Uh, gain protection. The next time this unit takes damage, ignore that damage. Gain three block. I'm actually going to end my round. So everyone is going to draw a card. 
Because I don't think I'm neither going to be able to break his armor to prevent the attack nor to destroy him this round. So I'm going to play this safe. We can totally just survive this one attack. That should be fine, right? Okay, he gains one attack, but attacks for seven, that's fine. We can block this. Okay, but we have more options right now. Seismic Slam. Oh, he's going to play cards. That's how it works. The Abonation deals six damage to all exhausted player units. Interesting. And he's going to attack me again. I have eight blocked. You know what? That is fine. No one will be exhausted. I'm just going to skip my turn. This is fine. The card is useless. He attacks against my block. This is fine. Cool. Oh, why did... It seems like my right unit, if I have too many on the field, they disappear? Huh, that is the me mechanic I don't... Why does... Is, the cat is actually... Uh, the cat is actually called Mr. Sniffles. This is something I don't understand. Two, four, six, seven. One, two, four, six, seven. Why did Mr. Sniffle disappear? This is not good, because Mr. Sniffle gave plus one attack to these mirages. Screw you, game. This is a mechanic I have never been explained to. What? Love this robot flying around. The abomination gets one attack, and he's going to attack her. She has three cards, which is good. Bleeding, discard a card. Okay, maybe this could be the turn where we win. The target's bleeding. Well, do you have something? Block, block. Uh, too much block, actually. Do you have something t that makes anyone else draw a card? No. Let's see. Let's reconsider the flashing edge. Depends on what she's going to draw. One attack is fine. Her? You know what? It's still fine. I want to win this. So we're going to target other ally against protection. Protection on her. And I'm not going to do anything, actually. End the round again. I want Rook to have more cards. It's fine. We are pretty okay right now. The damage doesn't matter. Okay, so the playing units. The question is, is this the turn where we win? In your repo. What's my repo? Do we have anything in the repo? We actually don't. Don't have that much card draw right now. That means it's fine. We can legitimately play it safe. I'm going to end my turn again. He's going to attack her. Target that against plus seven protection. Mm hmm. This is fine for this round. And safeguard on her too. I could have actually used taunt. That was kind of a mistake. I'm still going to end my round right now. No one takes damage. He, that is going to be blocked. I just want cards on my hand, especially on Rook, to get the combo going. It's fine. We can play it safe. Gives one attack permanently. You are going to attack her. Mm -hmm. How much armor do we have? So you're going to taunt. We're going to do it again. I just want to end this. Uh, hoping that this is the last phase. If he has one phase after this, I'm kind of... <laughs> Making a mistake here, unfortunately. Let's see how this is gonna go. He's gonna attack for nine. Nine. Well, we have one armor. That should work. Oh, he's still. Why does he attack? Oh, take damage. This card access cards. Oops. Okay, it's fine. Shadow play, maybe. We have so many. Why did he take damage now? Two, even. Don't understand that. I have armor. Okay. Whatever. Seven out of six cards. Let's go. Let's hope this is good enough to just win. She doesn't have... Oh, she has backflip. Sure. I'm ready now. I wa wait, 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 wait. First off, we need the anti-ammo. Should have done this for scattering shot. There we go. Bring down his armor. We really want to go for damage right now. Okay, he ca could only play take cover right now. This is fine. You will attack normally. Boom, you're gonna summon another Mirage. Do we have anything to buff our Mirages? No, it's fine. They still deal extra damage thanks to the minus armor, which is pretty good, actually. Look just a Oh, beautiful. And Raptor Wing or Crusher? Fire at will, Shadow Play. Sure, let's get the Junk Crusher going in. To play this card, eliminate a Mirage clone. I should have done this sooner. Could have gone with bigger debuff. That was a mistake on my part. Take this round, sure on her. She's just going to attack. I mean, we're pretty good just with this. Let's see what happens. Is this enough? Oh yeah, big boy. 
Victory! Oh man! And we could have gone for so much more. Perfect round against the boss. Ah, oh, this sounds, sounds and feels good. And Arsis and Thesis is actually the one I have augmented on Rook as well. Would be nice uh, as another nitpick to have an explanation of augmentation in the reward screen, but sure, let's click to continue. There's a lot of rewards and let's see what happens now that we've defeated the boss here. That felt good. I really like this 3D aspect. Okay. Oh, we could still move with our supplies. Or we could just extract. Let's see. I just want to see what happens. Even though we still have supply remaining, expedition complete. We have 22 of the super points. Extraction successful. <clears throat> you have successfully extracted from Blindside. This marks the end of the Zero Division demo. Thank you for playing. If you enjoyed your time in the Zerzura Exclusion Zone, please do consider wishlisting the full game on Steam. Link is as always, as always down in the description. Which features 220 plus cards to enhance your deck with, 9 crew members, 7 districts to explore, expanded draft mode to draft your decks and face off against a gauntlet of unique boss encounters. Keep in mind, right now we play, uh, had a look at the demo right now. Essentially at the second stage of the a campaign that's sorry not demo the campaign mode we didn't even look at the draft mode which i guess you're gonna play the campaign probably have a great time with that and then you still have the draft mode which seems to be like customizable campaign modes or something before you end this run any memo things you earn during the run is now available to spend in the fail safe panel menu oh, blue stuff can be used to add cards permanently permanently to your collection for future runs good to know would be nice too if you could just not have them permanently but also augment them permanently that would be cool like make this cost one less or so i mean it's cool to have the cards but different aspect or so would also be cool but who knows who knows regardless let's go and how do i get back to the main menu main menu just like this we could spend the menu ladies and gentlemen this has been zero division demo i have to admit i played this now for almost two hours wow one of my longest playthroughs so far on the channel i had a great time um the ui is very clear again pretty much it's just the net pick and it picks i mentioned throughout the game and if they just give you what they essentially promised here at the end more content i feel like this can be a very fun game Especially for people who like number crunching and really optimize the runs. But even with this, you have to spend a lot of time and contemplating your rounds. So it's maybe not that easy to get into because there is a lot of mechanics. You have three characters essentially to play that you can tackle in other orders. You have to, I mean, you guys saw how much time I spent essentially just in the first combat. And we had like two or three combats after that, which I cut out of this video, so to speak. Uh, so a single combat is surprisingly long, but also, um, especially with Rook, for example, uh, you have like a very powerful first turn card because you're only uh, first turn round, so to speak, because you're only drawing one card per round. I like this. This is a somewhat different mechanic and um, which this game complements, as we've seen in the boss fight. You can go completely high wire in the first turn. And even though you don't draw up to your full hand only one turn, so you're a little bit exhausted or weaker in the turns after math, uh, after that, you can kind of play around that and you're not useless. So it's not like one shot, one opportunity. You can, yeah, go completely haywire and then play a little bit defensively, collect the cards like it did in that last boss encounter. I'm very much impressed, I have to say. That that was surprisingly fun. Love the cyberspace punk aesthetic i think that one thing i'm legitimately missing and that would actually be a minus and how the game has been being presented this game needs really really needs voice acting please have that because it feels very empty otherwise and if that is being implemented i see this going to be among the best of this kind of genre i'm very much impressed and just from this demo so far very good demo shows that this game has a very, very solid foundation, in my opinion. But of course, this is only my opinion, my first impression. Now at the end of the video, please tell me what do you think of Zero Division? Bla what do you think? I don't know where that blog came from. What do you think of my presentation thereof? And please consider sharing this video somewhere. Please stay awesome. And we're going to see each other in the next video, right? Truly, thank you very much for watching. 
Until the next one, bye-bye. 